Could somebody say praise the Lord this morning? Could somebody just say praise the Lord this morning? Praise the Lord for 2023 and praise the Lord for 2024. If we live to see tomorrow, it'll be a new year. And I'm just so grateful for all the Lord has done for me. Amen. Matthew chapter 14 of the verses. Looking at this 3 o'clock in the morning, trying to figure where do we go with this text? There's so much going on in this text. But the Holy Spirit said, go down to chapter verse 22. And let's work with that. The Bible says, a straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into his ship and go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. When the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus said, spake unto him, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if, be, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind bolster us, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? I want to talk to them on the subject, faith in Jesus Christ faith in Jesus Christ. Dear God, we pray today as we come that you bless us, that you let us alone, dear God, to deliver the message that you have given us uh, by the unction of the Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that we would be able to give a word that would encourage the hearts of the people, a word that will feed the sheep and feed the lamb, the word, O oh God, that will touch the hearts of men and women everywhere. The word, O oh God, that will comfort us in the time of trouble. Dear God, we ask you to bless us today, to cleanse us from the top of our heads and bottom of our feet. Forgive us of our sins and make us whole and use us in your service. In Jesus' name, amen. Faith in Jesus Christ. Today marks the last day of the year, 2023. It is what we call New Year's Eve. Tomorrow at this time, we will have already crossed over into the year 2024, some 11 and a half to 12 hours earlier in the morning. As we reflect briefly on the year 2023, we will have to acknowledge that it took faith in Jesus Christ for as for us as Christian believers and as children of the kingdom of God to have made it up almost until the year 2024. This year was a challenge to our faith in God for if we would be honest with ourselves we would recognize that it was that it was hard it was a hard year for everyone and the Christian church has been put to the test of endurance by circumstances and situations in the year 2023. In the year 2023, we have been still trying to recover and recuperate from the worldwide medical crisis that has gripped us since 2019 and even up into 2022 and part of 2023. 
Some church doors have still not opened to full and unimpeded worship of the true and living God on a regular basis by its parishioners. The pastors and church leaders have been challenged by the drop in church attendance due to fear of public assembling. Some parishioners uh, have, have made the decision uh, that they're not ready to go back in to the church building. And that because of the slow recovery of the church goers uh -huh, to reassemble in the house of God on a regular and systematic basis, it has hurt a lot of church congregations. See, my friends, stagnation has settled in on large numbers of former church-giving, pew-sitting children of God who have allowed the comfort and convenience of home attendance through the internet, television, and radio broadcasts, move them from the biblical mandate of regular and systematic assembling of the saints of God together in physical and corporate worship of God through Jesus Christ by the person and power of the Holy Ghost. For I read in my Bible in Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 24 and through 25, where the Word of God gives us a clear and precise instruction as it pertains to Christian worship of God, our Savior. The verses tell us, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. He says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some of what he says, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Saints of God, listen to me, as the years pass by us, and as we get closer to the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that we are not to forsake assembling ourselves together in corporate and physical gathering of the saints in the place or in the church where we can come together and worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as members of his united body of Christ. Christ Jesus. My friends, I want you to hear what I'm saying today. Christ Jesus is still the head of the body, which is the church. And we, as members of the body, we are members one of another of his spiritual body. My brothers and my sisters, as we move into the year 2024, we ought to be formulating our minds and bodies and spirits and starting to concentrate more accurately on Jesus Christ. We should make 2024 the year that we have total faith and total reliance on the person and on the power of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Is there, anybody listen to me today? Church, even as God has brought us this far into 2023, we are confident and we are sure that by our faith in Jesus Christ that he will guide us and lead us into 2024 by the power and presence of the Holy Ghost. You see, my friends, our faith in Jesus Christ will keep us in times of trouble. And when life struggles tend to weigh us down and discourage us, we can always lean on our faith in the Lord. I can't get no help in here. In times of sickness and in times of pain, we can pray to our Heavenly Father through the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And he will hear our cry. He'll answer by and by. Somebody say, I feel the fire burning. And I feel a prayer wheel turning. Somebody say, just a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. I can't get no help here. Just to talk with the Lord. You got enough in 2023. Just talk and pray to God. You talk and back out enough folk in 2023. It's time to get right with the Lord. Faith in Jesus Christ. You see, church, our faith in Jesus Christ will allow us to persevere. Our faith in Jesus Christ will allow us to be sustained when Satan himself will try to destroy us and take our very lives. See, church, faith in Jesus Christ is a necessary element of our Christian existence. When life throws punches at us, 
Good God Almighty. But like those punches at us, uh huh, that we are unable to duck and dodge from. When it seems as though our ships of life are taken in water, that we are slowly sinking spiritually. Sometimes our body is going down physically. But I want to give you a word of encouragement today, my friends. We need not give up. We need not jump off the ship. Because you jump off the ship, you're going to jump right into the arms of the devil. Huh? But this is the time that our faith and assurance is to be in the power of Jesus Christ to deliver us from the tempestuous and the tumultuous winds of life that rock and roll our ships. Every once in a while, the wind's going to blow. That's part of life. Every once in a while, our boat will start going down. But we've got to know that in that time, that's when we got to call on the captain of the ship. His name is Jesus Christ. And ask for his help. Stop, Stop belly aching. Crying about what she done and he done. Text it to Jesus and see if God won't straight it out on your account. Is anybody going to look with me today in Matthew chapter 14? I want to look at verse number 22. But the Bible tells us, and straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to go into a ship and to go before him unto the other side. And the Bible says, while he sent the multitudes away. Stay with verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Understand, understand the, the context of this scripture. Because Jesus had not long before had fed 5,000 men. Besides women and children in a desert place, and he only used five loaves and two little fish. Yet when he fed these folk, there still remained 12 baskets full of the fragments that remain after Jesus' miraculous feeding and Jesus' supplication of the over 5,000 hungry human beings. Now Jesus constrains or, 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 or Jesus tells them, I, I want you to get in the ship. Now, now I fed the 5,000 and, and they see me perform miracles and, 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 and I don't want you to get caught up in it because I want you uh, to understand that you're following me. But don't follow me because I perform miracles. But follow me because I'm the son of the living God. And so Jesus took time to go out and go to the mountain and pray by himself. But he constrained the disciples to get into the ship. And he told them, I want you to go over on the western side of Galilee towards Capernaum and to Bethsaida of Galilee. Well, to make a long biblical narrative short uh, for the sake of time today, I'm going to give you some cliff notes. Uh, those that uh, went to school and, 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 and study, you know, sometimes you use cliff notes. Cliff notes. I'm just going to give you an outline here real quick. The ship that the disciples were in, listen to me, began to be tossed with waves, for the Bible says the winds were contrary. But Jesus, the Bible tells us, in the fourth hour, or, or between three and six o'clock in the morning, went to the rocking and wave-driven ship, leaving the mountaintop where he was praying, because he had to save his disciples from sure disaster. And he had to save them from the harm of the ship. Watch what happens. Jesus approaches the ship walking on the water of the sea. And by him walking on the water of the sea, he shows that he is fully man. But yet he is fully God. And he still has power over nature. Still has power over the universe. Listen to me. Listen to me. Him walking on the water put fear in the disciples. And troubled their minds so much that they thought, they said, it is a spirit. And they cried for fear. I, I guess I would have been the same way. Here it is, dark at night. Ship is rocking and rolling. And here comes Jesus walking on the water. 
I ain't never seen nobody else walk on water before. And here he come, walking on water. I might have jumped off the boat and started swimming the other way. I don't know if I can even swim. I didn't drown. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> They cried for fear because they thought they were seeing a ghost. But watch Matthew 14, 27. The Bible tells us, but straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. See, my friends, Jesus has a way of reassuring all his disciples that he is the God, he is the great I am, and that because of that, he can do the impossible. Because with me and things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Anybody hear me today? If God be for you, he's more than the world could ever be that's against you. Am I getting any help here? If you could trust in the Lord just a little bit, he will carry you through. I can't get no help here. If you would just put your hand in the hand of the man that still wants Put your hand in the hand of the man that calm the seas. And I declare 2024 will be a better year for you. I can't get that out of here. We've got to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. Lean not to your own understanding. All your ways. I didn't say some ways. All your ways. Acknowledge him. The Bible says he will. Test about it. He will. I ain't talking about my mama, daddy, sister, brother. Jesus will direct my path. Isn't that right? We got to learn that God is able, he's willing, and he has the power to do it. <laughs> he has all power. That means he has infinite power. That means they say he's omnipowerful. He's omnipotent. Omni means all. He's all powerful, omnipotent. Because he got the power, I can call on him and get an answer to my prayer. <laughs> Woo, Lord. May God Almighty. Then we go down to verse 28. The Bible tells us, and Peter, y'all know who Peter was, don't you? Peter answered him, said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come to thee on the water. Listen to me. Peter now takes the role of the doubting, uh, yet show me disciple. Peter ought to have known better than to challenge the power of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, why Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ gives Peter one answer, and that one answer is one command. Only thing Jesus said, Come. You want to come? Come. You see me walking on water, you say, you want to you wanna come out here with me? Come. Huh? You said, if you if bid me to come, come. Come on, Peter. Come. He said, Peter, if you want to, if you want to taste of my power and ability to walk on water, then get out the ship and come on down. But watch verse 29. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, watch this. He walked on water to go to Jesus. I want to know this morning how many willing to stretch out and walk on the water sometimes. <laughs> it might not be physical water, but it might be the difficulties of life. It feel like you've got water under your feet. And you sinking and can't get no help. You're looking for, you're looking for uh, uh, some kind of respirator. You're looking for oxygen, and you're going up under. Good God Almighty. But Jesus says, walk by faith in his power. Peter began walking on water by his faith in Jesus Christ's ability and power to keep him afloat. Jesus' power to keep him above water. Watch verse 30 what happens. But when he saw the wind boisterous, talking about Peter, he was afraid. After he got scared, he began sinking. But watch Peter. He cried saying, Lord, save me. 
See, Peter started walking on water by his faith in Jesus Christ. But when Peter took his eyes off Jesus and looked at the boisterous wind, the fear overtook him. And when the fear overtook him, he began to, he began, he began to become afraid. And then when he began to become afraid, automatically he started sinking. Whoa, 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 whoa. Started sinking under the water. <laughs> but church, I want to tell you one thing today. That you need to keep your eyes on Jesus. Can I get a witness? Keep your eyes on Jesus in 2024. And he will carry you across the waters of life challenging situations and of life challenging circumstances. I'm telling you one thing, church. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to give Peter some credit. Because he realized that when he began to sink, he had enough spiritual sense to cry out to Jesus and say, Lord, save me. Hold on, folks won't say, Lord, nothing. He said, Lord, save me, I'm sinking. Lord, save me, I'm drowning. Lord, save me, pull me up. Some folk will begin to sink in life and are so hard-headed spiritually that they will not call out for God's help. And then you got some folk that's so stubborn that they would rather sink than ask God or anybody else for some help to the vibe. They would rather bust hell wide open than to ask God for any help. Huh? Good God Almighty. But I'm, I'm here to tell you that they, when you get in trouble, just call, just call on the Lord and say, Lord, I need your deliverance. Lord, Lord, I need, I, 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 I need your compassion. Lord, Lord, I need your love that only you can give me. The love that saves me and love that lifts me up. Because when I was sinking in sin, far from the peaceful shores, hell and hell is sinking deep within, sinking the ride no more, but the master. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna help me today. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the water lifting me. Now safe am I. Why am I safe? Because what happened? Love. God's love lifted me. But nothing else can help. God's love lifted me. Good God Almighty. Look at verse 31, Matthew 14. The Bible tells us, watch, watch, watch this, watch, watch this writer, this writer Matthew. Remember, Matthew was a publican. Matthew, I, I, I wrote from the Hebrew perspective. Beth, Matthew wrote to show everyone that Jesus was the Son of God. That was Matthew's prime objective when he wrote the book. Matthew writes from the objective that Jesus, everything he does in, in this book, is pointing towards Jesus' Messiahship. Don't miss it. He's speaking from a Jewish perspective. He's not speaking like Luke who's speaking to the Greeks. He's not speaking like Mark who, who wrote after Paul. He's not speaking like John who did his thing about the Christology of Christ. He talks about Jesus as Son of God. Watch what he says. He says immediately. Good God Almighty. What does immediately mean? Mean right now. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. Watch what he told Peter. He said unto him, O thou of little faith. And then watch what Jesus said. Wherefore does thy doubt? He said, what are you doubting from Peter? I was here all the time. <laughs> what are you doubting from Mount Zion? I'm here all the time. Why are you crying when I got my money? I'm here all the time. Why are you crying when I can't build a building? Got every excuse. But Jesus is there. All there. When you hear your call. I can't get my help with you. Oh, good God Almighty. Woo, I feel like preaching this morning. Jesus is there. To take your hand. All you got to do is stretch out and say, Lord, heal me. Lord, save me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, provide for me. Lord, take care of me. Stretch out your hand. And Jesus will grab it right in the midst. <laughs> See, when we're in trouble and we begin to sink in this life, stretch out your hand to God in prayer. He will lift you up out of the waters. Lift you up out of disasters that try to overtake us in this life. Jesus will take your hand if you just have enough faith in him to call on his mighty and powerful name. 
Jesus is our Lord. He is our provider. And Jesus, he paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin, sin left a sin, sin, uh, 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 crimson stain. But he watched it right in snow. Jesus took all our sins and allowed God the Father to lay them on his shoulders. Jesus hung bread and died that we might have right to the tree of life. Come on, Jesus, son of the living God, died on a cruel, cruel Roman cross for your sins and for mine. He died death of a criminal, good God Almighty, but he was sinless. He was spotless. He didn't deserve it. Took our place. Good God Almighty. <laughs> and I'm so glad to know today that Jesus took it all for us. Jesus, somebody say Jesus, he is King of Kings. Jesus, he is Lord of Lords. Took him off the cross. Made him in Joseph's new tomb. Stay there one day. Stay there two days. But early, early, early on the third day morning, the earth started quaking. The angel rolled the stone away. And God raised Jesus from the grave. With all power, heaven and earth, in his hands. And because of that power, my faith is in Jesus Christ. See, Jesus Christ is our rock in a weary land. Shelter from a stormy blast. He's our bread when we get hungry. And our water when we get thirsty. Thank God for 2023. But I gotta say bye-bye. 2023. Good riddance. 2023. Hello. 2024. We gotta walk by faith in Jesus. In 2024. And God will. He will. Let's walk on water if you need to. Because he is our provider. He is our sustainer. He is the God of the universe. And in case I don't see you, before 2024, I want to say happy, happy new year. Have a prosperous 2024 and put all your faith and all your trust in Jesus Christ in 2024 for great things are in store for Mount Zion Baptist Church of Chesapeake. If you just stay there, don't give up, don't leave the lot. Stay on the lot. Don't go running around the corner. Stay on the lot. Don't go running around the building. Stay on the lot. And God will. God will. God will. Let us build the church. Stay faithful to God. And God will take care of you. Anybody know God is good today? And you keep your faith in Jesus Christ. I know a man named Jesus who can do anything but fail. I believe. I trust. I know that soon, after a while, we're going to build that church. I'm not giving up. If you give it up, go ahead on and run away. But we're going to stay there, keep our shoulder to the rear. And after a while, hey, hey, we're going to see victory. We're going to see victory. Victory is ours. In Jesus Christ. How many of victory is yours? If you keep your faith in the hand of the Lord.